Welcome to this clear fact. Now, today we talk about the dark side of clear aligner orthodontics, black triangles. <laughs> My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. And My name is Michaela Zinat. I'm a general dentist in Germany. We see you right after this. If you like these videos, subscribe to this channel. If you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? And click on the little bell that you're going to be notified every time we upload a new video. And don't forget to give, give us the thumbs up. Michaela, Stefan. do you sometimes have black triangles? Me or in my clean checks? my patients. <laughs> Do you sometimes when you treat your patients, you know, during treatment or after treatment with clear aligners, do you see these black triangles appearing? Of course. I mean, we already see them appearing in the ClinCheck and not only seeing them appear in the ClinCheck, even we do have sometimes patients who deal with black triangles before. If I think about all the patients or a lot of patients with periodontal problems. So it's a really big topic. I mean, if we think about the aesthetics, so the question is, what are you doing if you see those black triangles appearing in your clean check? And, you know, the question is also, how can we prevent these black triangles from appearing? How do we, I mean, how do we manage that with our patients? I, I think the first thing is when you think that there can be black triangles, it's really important to tell the patients before. Of course. That's a possibility that we see these black triangles appearing. Otherwise, what happens is that, you know, everything you say before, Michela, is a diagnostic. Everything you say after, is in, it's, it's like an excuse. Of course. That's so it's like you didn't see it coming, you didn't. But if you talk about it before, if you talk about the possibility of seeing these black triangles before, showing even pictures to your patient, uh, then you look like you know what you're doing and you even can tell. Can you tell the future, Michela? I mean, it's a pretty good point what you said. And this is why we always have the ClinCheck open um, behind us or the Invisalign coordinator when she treats the patient. So she's maybe gluing the attachments, giving the patient their liners, and she's checking what happens on those aligners, um, those what she just gave to the patient. And she's discussing with the patient, you know, maybe talking about what teeth are going to move and then she going to see, you know, at one point, maybe a black triangle appears. So this is one part. I mean, tell your patients. And sometimes she even puts a little X, you know, on the back package from those aligners and the patient's going to be at home. Maybe there was a crowding, the teeth are going to be more straight. And then this little black triangle appears and yes, she told me that she showed me that on the clinic. And this is what just what you said. It makes you know, it gives trust. It, it shows the patient that we exactly know what we're doing. The patient is not afraid. I mean, could you imagine if you not tell the patient, they're going to think, oh my God, I had a crowding, but now I have a space. You know, I mean, this is what we just have to think. What is our patient thinking? But Stefan, let, let me ask you this. Um, if you see a black triangle in your ClinCheck, um, first of all, it does not really has to be there. This is one part. And it it doesn't really um, has to stay, but sometimes it can. So what do you do before to make sure that, you know, you're going to be safe on the red, white aesthetic on that way? So what are you going to do? First thing, like you said, I don't rely on the clean check for that. It gives it, it gives a good idea, but mostly for me, you know, I like to uh, when we use the simulation, when we do the simulation with the iTero, when we see a patient in consultation, sometimes we see also these black triangles. And for me, it's useful to explain to the patient because for us, it's it's obvious. You know what we know what a black triangle is. If you say that to a patient, they don't really know sometimes what we're talking about. So when we show them on the simulation, it's it's much easier. It, this is why it's such a good communication tool. Uh, and then we explain to the patient and we try to uh, explain, you know, what's the, the cause because there's different causes 
for uh, these black tri triangles to appear. And you can have uh, multiple causes causing this. Sometimes not only one thing. You can have the shape of the tooth. If you have big triangular tooth, teeth, and they're overlapping, there's a, much, a bigger chance you're going to see these black triangles. If the patient is old, like me, you have bigger chance to see these. I mean, if you had teeth overlapping for 50 years, uh, app applying a pressure on uh, the papilla, I like to say that papilla. Can you say papilla? Papilla. <laughs> oh, papilla. Oh. It's, it's, it's sound, it's really sound, I mean, it sounds better when you say it. So when you have a pressure on the papilla, papilla. Yeah, uh, that's it. It's, it's, I mean, we can move the teeth, but we cannot move the gum. We, it's hard to say how the gum will react. So okay. you have the tarnos now, that's you have it. all yeah. these, that's I mean, incredible. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, we use. You use doing your implants probably, but it doesn't mean, I mean, maybe it's me, but I haven't seen miracles in papilla growing back, papilla growing back. Have no. you seen miracles? Mm, well, it depends a little bit about what we're talking. Miracles, I never see, uh, saw miracles, but I mean, this is exactly what you say. Do it, you believe in miracles, Michelle? It doesn't, it, it, yeah, it, well, I do. <laughs> Um, not on black triangle miracles, you know, that the gum grows. No, but the thing is, I mean, why are the patient coming to us? You know, usually, of course, we tell them you, you have to, you need a straightening of the teeth, but most of the time we do have a comprehensive approach and, you know, the patient is asking for a beautiful smile. So those little things, if we see them, you know, like black triangles, or if we have even the feeling that one can appear, we need to have, you know, a solution for that. And one thing is, of course, we have to check the bone and we're not talking about an X-ray, especially not about a pen. If we're looking at anterior teeth, you don't see anything. We have to say that. I mean, nobody's doing a, a 3D for an orthodontic treatment because, you know, for checking for black triangles, we could, but this is not what we need. But a little bit, like you said, you know, to know the time Tunnel rule. That's, that's called overkill. Yes, but yeah. to know a little bit the tunnel rule, you know, that we say, okay, what is more than 4.5 millimeters? And I mean, how you can measure this? This is what we do at our clinic. We see the contact point, what is going to be in the clinic, the final contact point, and we just, you know, inject, we freeze the patient, and we use those little um, um, uh, uh, things when we, you know, uh, for the endo. You know, when we have the liquid coming out, how do you say that? The thing. <laughs> this is exactly what the, what your assistant, like you say, yeah. can you give me I the thing? You, you know, I really do say that. Um, the dingsbums, I say that. And it, it means anything. I'm, I'm surprised that the, the thing, the slings spoons. No, but anybody, everybody knows what I mean. You have this little rubber on it where you can really place it. And it gives you just an idea. I mean. Yeah, the file. No, yes. And the you could use fire. a fire, of course. But I prefer the, the dings dings is better with a little rubber on it. No, but anyways, it is just, you know, to make sure that you're going to have a plan B for that. So, and now we're going to talk about that. I mean, first of all, if you plan maybe to have restorations on that patient, maybe even on those particular teeth, let's say the shape is not good. This is one reason, triangular shapes, or it was just an inclination and you do want to change something, um, you know, in the cervical region, let's say with the bonding or even with the veneer, you may going to be fine on that and you're going to be okay. Maybe you talk to your technician if you can, you know, close it that way. If not, there is a better or good solution how we can, you know, a little bit control that more or even close a black triangle, what we see on the clinch again. Stefan, what is that? We can do some IPR. And we talked about IPR in previous videos. And I mean, if we just talked about that uh, rule, what's this going to do? It just makes our contact point, you know, more longer and, you know, puts the contact point even more to mm -hmm. the cervical. And then it's up to you, you know, you can change a little bit the shape of the tools. You can, you know, whatever you want to, but it gives you control. And of course, like Stefan said, if you had patients that had black triangles before, 
it's not only your it's not always your goal to to close them but talk to the patient sometimes you know they think maybe they're going to yeah. appear after a treatment treatment like that talk to them black triangles in anterior regions on the lower jaw maybe you will never see them if you talk just talk to your patient but in regions you know if you take your picture from the smile and you see are we going to see that after there's a big chance your patient will not really be happy about that and think of another thing is that if you plan to do a lingual wire retention wire after and you have big black triangles uh, you're going to see the wire through the triangles patient the patient will not be really happy about that so they have to know about that you can do some uh, some composite also there's a uh, like the bioclear technique that you can use to fill these spaces but again all these uh, these decisions i mean you have to talk about this before with your patient it doesn't have to be don't make it a surprise for the patient because it will not be good for you, not good for your reputation and not good for the patient. This is not how you want to end the relation with the patient. You want this, you know, when it's finished, you want this to be a happy ending. <laughs> That's true. Well, even like this now, happy ending. I think um, perfect. Black triangles should not be um, a big issue if we're going to see them in the clinic and provide everything what we just talked about. So, Stefan, thank you very much for um, your explanations on that. Michaela, I hope your things booms are all in order. The things booms are perfectly in order at my clinic. <laughs> things booms. Remember that. I'm Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. And my name is Michaela Zina. I'm a general dentist. And we'll see you next time. Have fun making the move. Oh, if you stayed up to here, it's because you like these videos. Then if you like these videos, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the little bell. Then you're going to be notified every time we upload a new video. And you know what? Give us the thumbs up.